Good morning, and welcome to The Voice of Charity. I'm Katie Breedeman, and we're so glad that you've tuned in today. We welcome all of you who are on our radio uh, channel, WNDZ 750 AM here in Chicago, as well as those who have joined through the live stream on YouTube and Facebook at Catholic Chicago. Today's show is about Catholic Charities Refugee Resettlement Pro Program. And Catholic Charities, for over 40 years, has been helping over 200 refugees a year. We greet them right when they arrive in Chicago, assist them with housing, employment, uh, helping their children get into schools if they have children. And then we also help them with all the other adjustments that come when you are starting over in a city or a, a new city or a new uh, country. Uh, Catholic Charities also assist our refugees uh, who are overcoming persecution in their home countries. It's quite a trauma that they've experienced, and so Catholic Charities is aware of that and tries to assist in every way that we can. We've all seen the anguish on the faces of the Afghanistan refugees uh, over the last few days in the news, and so they are particularly in our minds this morning. Our guest today is Elmita Kulovich, who is Catholic Charities Director of our Re Refugee Resettlement Program. And we're so delighted to have her here today to talk about the status of the program this summer. Welcome, Elma. Good morning. And I know that there's so many unknowns about the Afghan situation right now, Elma, but uh, in a perfect world, if things go well, those who want to leave uh, Afghanistan, what would be the process for them applying for uh, asylum in the United States? They go to their embassy and then our embassy steps in to review their cases. Can you, can you share a little bit with the audience about the steps that someone goes through you know, to try to leave their, their country and arrive in the United States, and particularly the Afghan refugees right Right now yeah i wish you know that the for afghanist refugees is going to be really uh challenging i think like in general a refugee resettlement program is really long process it takes like 12 different steps for somebody who you know to enter the united states starting for united nation you apply first for a settlement uh, usually such a refugees are already outside of their country let's say afghanis hope is that they're going to go to turkey and, be, uh, and the tour, from Turkey, they're going to start processing uh, to resettlement, resettlement for another country. It's one of those countries will be United States. Uh, and then from this such a long process, eventually they're going to come here. So basically everything started with United Nations, then United States State, State Department. They take over the cases and start different uh, uh, background checks, uh, interviewing processes. And after this such a long process, Eventually, those cases will be assigned to uh, one of the nine uh, national agencies who are providing resettlement services for refugees. Uh, our national office is United States Catholic Conference of Bishops, and we do have a contract with United States Catholic Conference of Bishops. According to the contract, they're going to start assigning cases to, to us, and from there we're going to wait for their arrivals and start uh, welcoming them. Uh, in, uh, International Office of Migration is uh, providing uh, traveling and scheduling uh, uh, travel for those for such a cases. And I was reading yesterday that oftentimes um, Afghan refugees uh, head to Pakistan first, but they're unable to do that in this case because of COVID concerns. The Pakistani restrictions are much more rigid than they had been in the past. Um, and so, you know, the, po the process is obviously even more challenging than before, but hopefully those steps that you just itemized, you know, can be expedited in some cases to just uh, get those people to safety. I know you mentioned that you've got housing set up and probably school uh, are ready to receive the children who are coming. But what is the basic process beyond those fundamentals that you go through to help people acclimate to life in Chicago? Before I re respond to that question, let me just tell you about a special immigrants visa. So basically just to about Afghanis refugees going back to Afghan Afghanistan, that uh, actually a uh, United States government is planning to bring uh, more than 20,000 uh, uh, Afghanis who did help uh, United States government during those 20 years, interpreted for them or uh, assist with other uh, uh, works. So I hope uh, that this in this process it will be really much faster, and they're gonna have already some people are in United States and processes is doing working uh, is uh, that will be done in a. Uh, 
Virginia. Um, so basically, after this process, we're going to get more Afghani uh, refugees. But the biggest concern is our refugees who, who Afghanis who don't who didn't work the United States and they don't have option to uh, leave country so fast. Yes. So, I- uh, we, we just need to hope and pray for those people that they're going to uh, reach safety. And, you know, and one of such a, such a cases we are expecting on 25th. So this is Afghani case with a special, special immigrant visa. This is the man who did work with United States and assist during the, the years. And he was fortunate one who was able to uh, escape uh, prior uh, all this new and the development in Afghanistan, he was able to uh, escape with his family. So basically, we found an apartment for this family, a furnished apartment. Uh, we're going to go to airport to pick the family up, a welcome family. And then that they have children. So like, like you said, a comprehensive case management will start from that moment. Uh, comprehensive case management actually start prior refugee arrivals. We schedule their health screening. We do um, uh, apply for social security number for those uh, clients, enroll them in ESL classes, um, enroll kids in school. Uh, we will see, we don't know yet, <laughs> this is, the, you know, it's also unknown, are they going to be school in person or virtual, but during the uh, those last two years, we did have a, a, our kids were virtual, uh, attended virtual school. So it's a lot of uh, different uh, services that we provide, employment services, as, as the goal of this program is self-sufficiency. So as soon as the clients arrive to this country, if they are uh, healthy and don't have any uh, medical uh, uh, challenges, uh, we start looking for jobs for them. Like, you know, usually those jobs are survival jobs. Uh, people start working and uh, paying their bills. So we call those jobs survival jobs. And then after a while, six months or a year, uh, because we do serve clients up to five years since arrivals, and then we are there for, for them to help them with job upgrades and to uh, be uh, or to get uh, uh, enrolled in some vocational training so that they could eventually get better skill and be uh, their uh, opportunity for better paid jobs is uh, available for that. I have such great respect for what you do, Alma, because you truly take each situation as it's the only one, as if it's the only one that uh, you've ever, you know, handled. And um, they can be very complex with language barriers um, and with, as we said at the top of the show, the trauma, uh, the level of trauma that these uh, refugees have experienced. You know, when you meet them, it probably takes a little while for you to uh, ascertain uh, what level of trauma they've experienced and how uh, capable they are of emerging out of it. Am I right? Sure, absolutely. You are right. Uh, every case has a case manager assigned. Uh, currently, we are operating with one case manager and then uh, employment counselor, and then with case, let's say, my case aid. And uh, we have a, such a great collaboration with the, with other uh, stakeholders within city, working with uh, them. Uh, we don't provide ESL classes. Uh, we refer our clients to uh, one of uh, other uh, ESL providers, work with uh, medical clinics, uh, mental health clinics uh, to help refugees, with Catholic charities, uh, uh, counseling uh, services. So it's like really, this program is really comprehensive, but to, to welcome refugee and have a focus on case on case basis and make sure that their integration into this community and uh, uh, success uh, will be done and could be done only with all of us working together and with our refugee families, which I always, uh, of course, respect because I think that uh, I always admire uh, each of them who had the strength to come to this country and courage and to start all over again. It's really, it's not a simple process to come somewhere in new culture, new language and everything, but they did have a courage to, to, to do so. 